Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Could the USA adopt the EU's right to be forgotten policy? UK taxpayers fund EU students by over £100 million per year. Austria says UK exit from the EU would spell disaster. EU court grants internet block to ITV. Plus, Greenland dangles the resources carrot to EU kleptocrats. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, US officials are perusing the EU's directive on data protection, in particular with respect to the right to be forgotten clause. These are very interesting statements. The EU proposes stricter maintenance of corporate data holders, insisting that individuals should have the right to completely erase their data upon request. Yet the government actions do not match their policies. As you can see from our legislation archives on policy and funding, more regulation over data privacy and more investment in data security departments is taking place all the time. Furthermore, it is public knowledge that the US is building one of the largest state-run data centers on the planet for tracking internet data packets. And here, in the UK, we have a similar profile with the new systems that have been introduced at GCHQ. So why the political rhetoric around data policy harmonization? Well, we're not sure yet, but as and when we find out more, we'll bring it to you here on this channel. Taxpayers in the UK funded mainland Europe students to the tune of £100 million. Apparently, funding awards to EU students increased by 17.5%. Interestingly, students from Romania were one of the largest recipients of funding. Remembering that the veto controlling the floodgates ends early next year, these statistics already highlight the desire by Romanians to take advantage of their ability to migrate to more prosperous areas of Europe. This is the EU being completely irresponsible, and whilst our politicians try to persuade us that the influx will be minimal, how can we believe their statistics? When the borders opened, they said they expected around 20,000 migrants to move to the UK, and over 1 million came. A British exit from the European Union would be disastrous for Europe's image in the world, German Finance Minister Wolfgang Schobel said. And the world has already failed to recognise that the disaster that is the EU then. Greece, Spain, Ireland, Portugal, Italy, even France is looking to be on shaky ground. Mr Draghi winding the handle on the Heidelbergs, printing money to fund his infinite bond buy policy. And the US Federal Reserve which appears itself to be all out of books and yet is on record as running a covert bailout of Europe with its temporary US dollar liquidity swaps. I would suggest that Britain leaving the EU would strike most folks as the only sane thing to do and any notion that this would be disastrous from Europe's image is like trying to put a flowery bonnet on a pig and call it Bo Peep. So the EU courts have been flexing their muscles again. The case, which was triggered by a dispute pending at a London court, establishes the scope of broadcasters' rights under EU copyright rules and whether these include the right to prohibit broadcasts by a service such as TV Catch-Up. Again, the point I really want to highlight is not the rights or wrongs of this case, but to identify that once again the EU Court of Justice reigns supreme over the London court to which the case was first heard. Is this what we in Britain really want? A justice system that has no authority and is subservient to courts in Brussels? Where were we told that the government would make this transfer of power? In whose political manifesto did we vote for this to take place? Greenland has begun pitching like a market trader to EU ministers. In this article, Greenland's Prime Minister has warned the European Union that he would scrap the preliminary deal to secure mineral resources for access by the EU. 
Interestingly, the article goes on to explain that there is deep interest from China to gain access to those very same resources. So it seems that Mr. Kupik Kleist is getting frustrated with the EU's lack of financial commitment in the region. Today in our video library, this video from Russia Today looks at the ignorance and futility being played out in the EU halls of Mordor, whilst at the same time the young are simply being cast aside. The suggestion is this is a recipe for deepening unrest and extremist actions. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. And finally, our The Word program is active again. If you would like one of our public speakers to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.